great book on Tom, the patriarch of the Red Sox. Bill wrote it. Uh, it came out not too long ago, and it's a, a if you like old time baseball, you want to read about the Red Sox, fascinating team, Yorkie, the black white thing. It's a perfect book for you. You'd really get into it. All right, um, all right, Bill. Let's do sixty seven and seventy five. Two years, the Red Sox also lost Game Seven. Sixty seven came out of nowhere. You know what really surprised me? I did not realize he hated Dick Williams that much. My gosh, the whole team. Yes, Skrimsky couldn't stand. Him. The whole team hated Dick Williams. Here it is all these years. I think Dick Williams is a magician with the Red Sox, and the whole ball club and the whole organization couldn't stand him. Give me some thoughts on that for a sec. Go ahead. Well, he was a magician, though. He'd, he'd come out of Toronto the year before and led them to the uh, the championship, and, and they brought him in in 67, and uh, he was only a few years older than these players. He'd been on the team with some of them. He His last playing year, I think, was 64. And uh, but he was a—he uh, he didn't have a military background, but he might as well have. I mean, he—he he ran that club like a, uh, a military organization. He didn't mind who he uh, who he irritated or whose shoulders he made bump up against. And he also, him and Yorkie, Yorkie didn't like him at all. You would think Yorkie would love him. He won him a pennant. Yorkie didn't like Dick Williams at all. Talk about that for a sec. Go ahead. Yeah, I think he was a hire, I think, of Dick O'Connell, who was a, kind of the guy that was the, he was essentially the general manager of the Red Sox, and he came from a military background himself, uh, but he was never a drinking buddy of Tom Yawkey. He, he brought uh, in a whole different style of running things, running the place like a business, and that, that paid off pretty quick with, uh, with the 67 team. I mean, the 66 team was only a half game out of last place, it's hard to remember that the Yankees were in last place that very year, 66. So that was a big triumph for the Red Sox to finish a half a game ahead of the Yankees. But they were basically a last place team, and all of a sudden they won the pennant in 67. And, you you know, you've got to give the manager some credit for, for something like that. Right, and Yaz didn't even like Dick Williams. You would think Yaz, triple crown MVP, one of the great years of all time. Yaz couldn't stand him, which shocked the heck out of me. How about that for a second? Go ahead. Maybe that's part of what happened. I mean, sometimes opposites can, uh, you can create a, a, a situation where conflict breeds some kind of success. Yeah, that was just a tremendous year for Yaz. Yeah, so he, he pulled it all together. That was the last triple crown until just a few years ago when Cabrera won one. But uh, it was over 40 years, I think, between them. And he, he put on such a final push those last few weeks of the season. He hit almost 500. He drove in the winning run, you know, I don't know, what, six out of 14 games or something like that. You just couldn't keep him down. And seven hits in his last eight at-bats, the last two games yeah. of the season against Minnesota. They lose games. I, I was at both of those games. You do? And the Tigers lose the double head, the last game with a double yeah. head of the Angels, and they win the pennant. Um, Yorkie, I mean, that came out of nowhere. So that really had a, despite the loss to St. Louis, you could live with the loss. If there was ever a franchise that is okay with losing a seventh game to Gibson, it's a 67 Red Sox, and probably Yorkie felt the same way, correct? Well, I think, you know, most of us were so shocked. It had been 21 years since the Red Sox won a pennant, and it was just such an exciting year to come out of no place. It was the impossible dream, as they said. So everything else was anticlimactic. And I think that Yaki had, and the rest of us, had every reason to think that they would come back and win again the next year and the year after that and the year after that, because... They had the ingredients. It, it just didn't happen that yeah, way. Yeah, five, five years. They didn't play very well. I mean, they you know almost won in 72. They finally got good again in the mid-70s. Here comes Lynn. Here comes Rice. I mean, Yaz is still sitting there. They you know they make some good trades. O'Connell, of course, and uh, Daryl Johnston. And the Red Sox have the wonderful year in 75, the last uh, second to last year of Yorkie's life. How about the 75 Red Sox for a sec, Bill? Go ahead. Let me hear. Yeah, well, you mentioned 72. They only missed winning the pennant by a half a game that year. That was a strike year. And the the Tigers edged them. The Tigers and the Red Sox, they didn't play the same number of games. Stupid. Stupid. After the strike at the beginning of the season, they just picked up the schedule from where it had been. And and uh, if the Red Sox, you know, if one other game had gone different, they would have ended up 
you know, in a playoff game against the Tigers, which they probably would have lost. No, <laughs> Tigers, won, the Tigers won the one extra game. They were even in a loss yeah. column, so that was a disaster. Right. But in 75, the Red Sox were a great base. The MVP Rookie of the Year, they had Rice. That's a great baseball team, the 75 Red Sox. You know that? Yeah, and they probably, probably would have had a good chance to win the, uh, the World Series, except Rice got hit on the had a broken hand there just a couple, two or three weeks before the end of the season, and he wasn't able to take part in that World Series, or I'll say they might have won that one. And I was fascinating what you wrote about with Bill Lee in Game 7 against Perez, with everybody all upset, including Yorkie. Give him some thoughts. That was a great comment you had, uh, a couple of pages on Lee and how much that bothered everybody in the Red Sox fandom. Go ahead about that for yeah, a second. Yeah, he kind of, uh, I don't know, he always went his own way, Bill Lee, of course. Uh, and uh, the Red Sox had just come back from that great, uh, game six win with Carlton Fisk, first Bernie Carbo, and then uh, bringing Red Sox back into it, and then uh, Carlton Fisk hitting his famous home run that we've all seen a hundred times since that on uh, on TV. They were in a, a good shot to win it, but uh, Bill Lee decided he'd he'd throw his own pitch there to uh, to Perez and. Uh, it, uh, it kind of left the ballpark. Hey, on Aoife's pitch, and I did not realize all the Red Sox hierarchy, they were livid at Lee for fooling around with the game by throwing out Aoife's pitch with a 3 nothing lead in the fifth inning of a game seven. And you know what? They're right. Uh, Lee yeah. is completely out of line for that. I know he thinks he's a goofball, and it's fun, but Yorkie's near death. The Red Sox people know this. They want to see him win a championship, and here's Bill Lee fought around in game seven. And you know what? That's not the right thing to do with you, Bill Lee, correct? Yeah, uh, he and Yaki had a pretty good relationship, but uh, uh, that moment was not uh, was not a good moment for them. And uh, apparently, uh, you know, he he had a few harsh words to say about uh, Lee, and a lot of the other sports writers at the time thought that Bill Lee was uh, using they used words like irresponsible and immature and. And self-centered and all that. And it cost the Red Sox maybe a championship. Uh, Kirk Gowdy loves Yorkie. Give him a little rundown on Kirk Gowdy for a sec, Bill. Let me hear. Well, he brought Kirk Gowdy out of... Uh, he was working at a station in New York, and uh, he uh, he treated the broadcasters well, just like he treated everybody else. I think uh, Gowdy, coming from Wyoming, had a, had a love of hunting, and I think that he and... I don't think they ever went hunting together, but... I think they they talked about the that and so forth. I think they were just personalities that hit it off with each other. And he, yeah, and yeah, yeah, Gowdy was doing games with Mel Allen, and he brings Gowdy, and Gowdy says nothing but great things on Yorkie. Um, yeah. uh, uh, his favorite all time Red Sox, I guess it's Jaskrimski over Williams, correct? I guess because he was a little closer with Carl, as I said, Ted kind of kept to himself. And uh, and Yaki never did bring him back. Uh, they thought that he might have made him the manager of the Red Sox at at some point, and uh, he didn't really. Um, yes, you know, we you mentioned the story about him and his mom, and how the Yaki helped out his his mother. There was a friendship there. He uh, he had a locker. Yaki always kept a locker in the Red Sox clubhouse because he liked working out playing Pepper before games or if the team was out of town. and He put his locker in between Carl Yastrzemski and Reggie Smith. That's what, That was Tom Yockey's locker. Wow. Uh, last thing, Bill, it's, you know, Rizzuto mentioned this, so did the Yankees, that the Yankees always had the little edge over the Red Sox. The Red Sox were a little soft. You think that's true? And if it is true, is Yockey responsible for that as well? Could well have been. I mean, he, he pampered the ball players, And I think a lot of the Yankees did feel as though it gave them an edge because they had to fight for their money and the Red Sox were, you know, were just maybe treated a little too softly. Indeed. He did a great job at this, Bill. I'm sure it was a labor of love. Tom Yorkie, uh, patriarch of the Red Sox, always a pleasure to talk to you once again. Keep up the good work. Thanks for giving us so much time today. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you read the book and I could see how... Uh, uh, some people that do interviews, they didn't really read the book that carefully. You read it really well, and uh, I appreciate it. You got it, Bill. Nice to have you aboard. Bill Nolan, of course, uh, Tom Yorkie. I wouldn't put him on if I didn't think the book was a great book. Uh, and again, I know Yorkie is, you know, you go by the bookstore and there's Tom Yorkie. What, Tom Yorkie? I'm going to read 600 pages? You're going to learn something. I'm telling you right now, you're going to learn something. And that black-white thing is fascinating. It's a, it's a tough call. I don't change it myself, but it's a tough call. Five o'clock. Come on back here on Mad Dog on